Welcome to Joshua Tree. Today we're packing up the Jeep and heading out to the desert to photograph the Perseid meteor shower. The drive is about two and a half hours from Los Angeles, or three and a half if you get stuck in traffic like I did. Woo! And yes, the desert is warm in August. It's a little hot, but uh, you know, it's dry heat, so it's not too bad. After cranking the AC and chugging some Gatorade-infused water, I set out to explore the national park. Now, due to my initial traffic delays, I only had a couple hours, which means I had absolutely zero time to waste. Check this out. Episode one, Anakin Skywalker. Yeah. Something like that. Well, what's time for if not wasting, right? I kept running around knowing that eventually I'd find something. Ah, there's a Jeep. walking around these crazy trees, trying to find some crazy angles, you know what I mean? I'm starting to panic that I'm not gonna get a shot. We'll see. I'm gonna work my way over here, trying to get something with these layers in the background. You can't really see a lot of, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of sunlight. Sorry about that. It's starting to get really nice light out here. Look at this. It's pretty nice. Next, I headed over to the dry lake bed, an isolated patch of land on the outskirts of Joshua Tree. The lake bed should provide ample opportunity for social distancing, meteor viewing, and if we're lucky, a few selfies. Nice. Normally, blue hour is my favorite time to shoot, but this was a mission to photograph the night sky and I wanted to maximize that time. So I quickly set up camp, made a little top ramen, and settled in for the night. Okay, this is my little setup. Got my chair, got my little solar light, got my camera. Did a few test shots. I think I got a composition that I like. Now I'm just gonna sit here and wait. See a lot of planets. See Jupiter, see Saturn, see Ursa Major behind me. No meteors though. This is my first time all summer to uh, do some astrophotography, so I'm pretty excited to be out here. I've been out here about an hour. <laughs> it's starting to pick up a little bit now. I've seen like uh, probably 15 or 16. I've seen like three massive ones right here uh, in the kind of the northwest sky, right across the Big Dipper. They're never where my camera is pointed. Just gotta keep uh, taking photos and hope one of them streaks across. Ah, I just caught one. So just punch in, you see it right there. It's like right in my eye line. Boom. That's probably the best one I'm gonna get. I might try to shift my camera around and see if I can find something else that I like. I'm pretty happy with it. <laughs> with that first image I got. It's morning time. <sighs> Slept pretty well. Underneath the stars, woke up a few times. It actually got a little chillier than I thought it was gonna be. I got my little light sleeping bag, light fleece bag. <sighs> All right, I'll make some coffee and uh, maybe do uh, a little bit of shooting around here. Photo ready. Just a little bit of sugar. Luckily, I got the water just warm enough. 
perfect temperature. There's this uh, kind of pinkish, pinkish blue gradient in the sky over the mountains. So I'm gonna bring out my 600 millimeter. See if I can get a, some photos of that. Jesus, bird just flew right above my head. As soon as the sun comes up over these little hills, the peak on those two little mountains are gonna kind of like light up. Cool. As you can see, the peak lit up a little bit. I just realized I was gonna set up my camera to do a time lapse. I completely forgot. Oh well. I think that's a wrap on the desert. Now we'll just head back to the coast, call it a day. It was a short trip, and I only walked away with a handful of images. But I sat in the desert and saw meteors shoot above the Earth's surface, so I'd call it a win. Next time we'll go someplace new. Who knows, maybe we'll find something cool out there. Either way, we'll definitely be taking more selfies. Just have a little breakfast before I uh, hit the road. Pop up. Talkie.